During our last sea trial, we found a few problems with this rudder. Not just the rudder itself, but a little bit, mostly to do with the hardware. We've also got a chip that needs to be fixed. So we did a lot of work on the rudder, we made a lot of changes, added some new hardware, moved some things around, and we're going to take a look at that. That's coming up right now. All right, for the um, for the little gouge that I had in the uh, in the rudder, this is the repair on that. It was just a matter of putting a little bit of uh, wood filler down and then varnishing it about ten more times. This uh, wood filler tends to suck up varnish, and um, of course on the last run, uh, I think that's when we damaged it. Now it's yeah, can't even tell it's there. Okay, one of the uh, one of the problems that I noticed also on this rudder was the difficulty in getting it to go up and down, and um, that difficulty really wasn't all that clear to me until I started doing a few more measurements. This this new rudder is about one and a quarter inches thick, maybe just a shade under that, or yeah, it's about one and a quarter inches thick. And I knew that the rudder, uh, the rudder control arm, was was less than less than that. Of course, it's only about one and one eighth inch. So I had to add uh, a couple of shims to it, to uh, shims that look like this, and to to make these two fit. And what I did was I added one shim to um, each side here. Again, let's just see if we can. I added one shim to each side, as you can see. Here's a shim, and this these are about one sixteenth of an inch. Uh, so that gave me an eighth of an inch extra. But uh, for some reason, every time I put the rudder on and assembled everything, see it's got the beach kit. And these two little pieces, they go basically. Out like that one here and then one on the bottom and then uh, and of course the uh, the rudder sits in between here and swings back and forth and one thing that I noticed was that the rudder wasn't swinging back and forth in fact it was sticking and it was sticking really really um, hard and you know I'm in the middle of getting this rudder back to working. Now one thing I noticed was that yeah this so uh, if I measured this thing with this it came out one and a quarter inches. But there's also a bit of a a, a trim on this and I thought well what about this then? I didn't even never even looked and it's one and one eighth inch. And I said, well, it's a quarter, one and a quarter, and this thing trims down. It, it gets skinnier, which is kind of odd, <laughs> because it's probably not supposed to do that. It's probably supposed to be flat all the way across. But this is original rudder design. So what I decided to do is I'm going to, of course, I, I took these plates off and the plates and everything was... Uh, all varnished and everything so uh, when I pull the plates off it just pulled half the shim off with it you know so I had to clean the shim off uh, but it left a huge gaping hole here so I can either I filled it in with um, wood putty or I can just shave the whole thing off and start with a double double thick layer but I think what I'm just going to do is going to try an extra layer here and that one doesn't go on that side. This one's been carved to fit the other side. So I'm going to put uh, this fits on here. So I'm going to put another shim on here and see if that um, see if this solves the problem. It's hard to get a good picture of what's going on here with me standing back a little bit. Um, that, so the the rudder was sticking and it was because this wasn't enough shim here 
And so I put another shim inside here and voila. Alright, so that that problem is going is working out just fine. The next problem we um, we discussed, another problem we discussed was um, getting the rudder further out of the water. And of course, uh, most of that involved um, just a little bit of shaving, shave a little bit up here so that you know where it stopped at. And as you can see, it stops, uh, it, it actually won't get the rudder out of the water. The water line is about here, but it would get a lot further out of the water, bring it up to here. Now I could probably bring it up even further, but I just shaved this off. How much more can I shave off? I don't know. Um, but this should be enough to keep it out of the water. Now, um, the other thing is straightness, and I've also shaved a bit off of here, which is basically the rudder down stop, and this determines where the rudder, um, rudder when the rudder's down, where it stops. And I wanted these kind of lined up with that. And it's still not a little bit. Could, could use a little bit more shading off there. Um, but, uh, you know, it, 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 at this point I think it's good enough uh, for another sea trial. So, uh, let's go over the hardware. Okay, so um, I wanted to point out a couple of features that I thought were pretty important to add. And one of them, of course, um, and you may or may not be able to see it, is a little brass sleeve here. Now, there are two of these. There's one here and one down below where it rotates at the bottom. Tell our handle. So we'll get the tiller handle lined up there. Which is also a little bit tight. But I don't find that. Now, what um, I'll show you the, the pulley that I'm putting in right now. Okay, this pulley, of course, is for the ropes. And there's the, uh, there's the other pulley. It goes on the other side. There are two pulleys. And it's got a little flange here on it that, uh, you know, I just made these out a couple of strips of more on the floor. The pulley, and what this uh, piece here does, this is like a loop. It keeps the rope from uh, slipping off the pulley. And that's one of the problems I had last time during the sea trials, the, the first sea trials, was the uh, rope. Just pulling right off the pulley and slipping down, and a little flange here keeps it from rotating around or getting pulled back down. So the next thing is I'm going to put a nut on this, and it's a locking nut. Uh, when I'm putting this stuff together, I don't use anything but locking nuts. Everything here is stainless except for these pulleys. So there's this piece, a nut behind here. And the nut behind this adjusts the force on this uh, on the holding kit on the beach kit. So that's that's how it holds that. And if I tighten that, it could squeeze it and lock it into place. If I loosen it, it'll flop around too much. Okay. So what I also have here is a spring, and this is this is my spring that allows this this whole business to. Uh, to rotate or to allow the uh, the rudder to kick up, and I don't know how that's going to work just yet. Here is a, uh, got a little clamp here to hold it. All right, hit that to the rope. Okay, so how this goes. Here, this one rope goes from one, two, three, four, five, six, five, six, five, six.
Okay, now these, these things need to be adjusted. Now once they're adjusted, they won't move. But the ones up top, they will move because that has to be kept loose. But this one, I keep it around wherever it has the most uh, rope on it. So I mean, if it's down here, it's obviously not going to do any good. But with, uh, the longest distance on the pulley between the ends. And then the next one, I've got another one on the other side. And this one, the pulley is going to go. It's not even, it's barely going to touch it. It's barely going to touch one little bit of the pulley. And then it strings up to the top. So it's going to touch like that right there. sure that these, these two um, rope, rope loops don't bind and uh, uh, don't spin. It starts up here at the spring that hooks very near to the top of the uh, of the rudder. Uh, I, I don't know what this thing is called. Rudder spade, rudder, rudder control arm. And then down here Okay, so that, that, that's tightened and that stays at that angle. And uh, of course, you know, it, it basically uh, is, puts a little bit of length here and allows this, uh, allows the spring to stretch along this. What we have is, uh, we have a spring load and in case the, the rudder hits something, the spring will, will come loose stretch and allow the rudder to kick up and this right here this right here is what keeps the rudder of course it pulls the rudder um, and locks it into position and if you understand anything about pulleys you know that if you have a pulley in this configuration if you have just a single rope it's say put 20 pounds of force on the spring then it'll just put 20 pounds of force on the on the uh, on the back of the rudder. But if you have it in this configuration with a pulley, you have 20 pounds of force pulling here and 20 pounds of force. So you basically double it to 40 pounds. So if I put 20 pounds of force on the spring, it'll double the force holding strength down here to 40 pounds. And of course, if I put 40 pounds, it'll double it to 80. So it puts a lot of force on it. And then, uh, of course, it comes around here. It looks like I need to angle this right there. Uh, it's a little bit high. And then, uh, it, and that's what these two pulleys here are for. Um, basically, keep this from, yeah, everything moves, slim, moves pretty smoothly. And then it goes up to the top pulley. And I've got another loop here, keeping the rope off from falling off. And then here is my uh, cam cleat. It locks it into place and a little rope loop to keep it uh, from popping out. The rope loop isn't going to do any good unless you put a rope loop, unless you put a knot in the end of the rope. So what that does is it keeps the rope from popping out. With the other one, put a little knot in it, keeps it from... And this one keeps it from getting away because you're, you're sitting there in the boat and you're steering it and one of these ropes gets loose and that's it. You're, you're chasing it. So that, that is used to pull the rudder up. And this, this goes directly into the back, drill a hole and then sink that little screw into it. And then I've got a piece of wire cable here and I wanted something really thin because whatever's down here is going to be in the water. And obviously that means this whole business here is also going to be in the water and I don't want that so I need a longer cable. And then of course that comes up to another pulley right here. So when we're ready to stow the rudder, we just pull on that. We're not going to be able to tell a lot because we're inside of a building, inside a room and everything. What I'll test out first, of course, is just the um, this piece here is not going to be. The good thing is, everything bends now much more easily than it used to. So, I'll go ahead and pin my hole. I know going to work. Obviously, 
also this face here. That's that's my rudder pull up. Okay, so that holds the rudder up. And when we're just sitting and I'm motoring along, I want the rudder out of the water and I don't want it hitting the uh, I don't want it hitting the motor. And this is pretty strong. Gotta keep it up. Uh, of course that works very nicely. You know, I'm let it, ready to drop the rudder and let it go down. To let it drop into the down position. Of course, if the boat's moving, it's going to push the rudder out or this rudder. I don't know if it sinks or floats yet. I think it floats. And I'll give it some, go with some force here. And grab that, I pull that, and it locks it into position. And if I put 10 pounds, I got 20 pounds of force here. I put 20 pounds of spring force here, I got 40 pulling this rudder and holding it down. And if I put 40, I've got 80. Put 50, I've got 100. I can put all kinds of force on this rudder to keep it down. Alright, so that's, that's pretty much that. Um, and then we're ready for some sea trials. So that's going to be um, so that's going to be next time. Thanks for watching my program. If you like my videos, be sure and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And for an organized listing of my YouTube videos, go to my website, www.wherearemyplacebos.com, and click on videos. Have a great day.